Um, can I share my testimony right Please. now? Or? Sure. <laughs> okay. That's why you're here. Free. Glorify Jesus, how the Lord saved you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so again, I was 21 years old when my, uh, my conversion happened. I'm now 28 years old. Praise God. Um, it was on April of 2007. Um, I had a friend that I used to work with at the time. One night, me and my friend were on the phone, and one conversation went to another, to another. And randomly, the conversation came up, the topic came up, and my friend told me that she was a Christian. Mm. And I said, oh, okay, um, I'm a Muslim. And she said, I know. And then basically, during the conversation, she basically said that, Islam and Christianity, Muslims and Christians have nothing in common when it comes to their beliefs and that their faiths contradict. So I was thinking to myself, you know, what is she talking about? Uh, excuse me, let me just drink my water. <laughs> and I don't remember exactly how I replied back. Uh, I said something around the lines of, you know, who cares if one's a Christian and one's a Muslim? Um, you know, we're all human and you know, I'm sure we can connect regardless of our religious beliefs. And that, that was basically the whole conversation. It was a very brief conversation. Uh, we had to hang up because uh, it was late at night and she didn't say much more. Um, that night, I honestly couldn't go to sleep. Um, you know, I was curious to know why there's that sort of separation between uh, Islam and Christianity and why someone would go as far as to say that, that we have nothing in common, our faiths contradict. Um, you know, I wanted to know more about Christianity. Um, I needed to know more about Christianity. And so the next morning I woke up, I was actually offended at what she had said. Because in my mind, Islam is the last religion superseding or coming after uh, Judaism and Christianity. Uh, Muhammad is the last messenger of God, the seal of all the prophets. And uh, the Quran is obviously the, uh, the last revelation, the last word of God. Um, so for her to say that, you know, obviously I'm going to be offended. So then I asked my parents basic questions about, um, you know, Islam and Christianity, the differences. And the first people I actually went to were my parents. Um, I know that's sort of biased in a way to go to my parents, since, since they're only going to give me their own, you know, personal perspective. Uh, in my case, that was the proper thing to do, is go to my parents. So my parents answered and said, well, Christians believe in Asa as being God's son, but that's Kifr. Uh, Kifr means a blasphemy or denying truthfulness. And they said things like, you know, Khuda has no son. Khuda means Lord or God in Farsi. Um, you guys can interrupt any time you want. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. no. Yeah, this, yeah, is, yeah, this, no. Is, this is what we want to hear. This is what we want to hear you testify. Yeah, yeah. We, that, this is what we want the people to understand what Muslim, how Muslims view Christian doctrine. Because you said, they said it's kufr. Kufr meaning disbelief, infidelity. And khuda, the Persian word for God, has no son. So it's ingrained in the Muslim mindset. And you've been taught this since you came out of your mother's womb. Allah has no son. So we want the audience to understand Preaching the gospel to Muslims is not as simple as just saying sports, uh, four spiritual laws. It's been ingrained in your very fabric, your DNA. Allah has no son. To say he has a son is the greatest sin against Allah, and you're guaranteed to go to hell. So we want the audience to appreciate the sacrifice Muslims have to make to come to know the only hope of salvation, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior. So go ahead, brother. So yeah, so then, you know, they also said that Islam is the last deen, the last religion. Uh, the Quran is, you know, the uh, Quran is real and the truth. You see, notice how shallow and earthly their way of thinking is. Um, I'm just going to step out of that time for a moment and just talk currently. Uh, like anyone hearing things like that, like, you know, God is one. Uh, God is not three gods. You know, God is one. Although we, we also believe God is one also. Yeah. Um, or things like, you know, when people hear things like, uh, you know, God has no son, um, th that's blasphemy. You know, anyone hearing things like that would naturally and uh, automatically agree and, and, you know, believe things like that, as if Islam is the standard. Um, you know, not knowing or realizing how in-depth the Old Testament is when it comes to atonement and, you know, forgiveness of sins, uh, you know, all the sacrifices that needed to take place in the Old Testament, in Jerusalem, in the temple. 
um, you know, leading to the final sacrifice, the Messiah dying for us so we can have salvation. Um, so, uh, anyway, so that, that was my point. Uh, going back to the story. Um, so I started reading, you know, the first chapters of the Quran at that time. At this point, I honestly had no objections or anything against the Quran at this point. Um, so then, I think it was the next day or the day after, I wanted to go to a mosque and talk to a Muslim leader or a sheikh. One of my Muslim friends referred me over to a, uh, a mosque. So I met up with a Muslim sheikh, a Muslim leader, and we sat down. I asked him similar questions about the differences of Christianity and Islam, um, you know, what Christians believe in. A lot of people tell me, you know, go to the expert, you know, talk to, talk to a Muslim leader. So I did that. And, it, you know, it was question after question. He gave me the same typical answers that I've always heard. And, you know, just because you hear the same answers over and over again doesn't necessarily make them true, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. So then um, him knowing, him sensing that I wasn't really accepting his answers and him knowing that I was from Iraq, a Muslim, he said to me that if somebody was, someone in Iraq, if someone in Iraq asked these many questions about Christianity, as if they're willing or thinking of converting, not that I was thinking of converting, but uh, if someone back home in Iraq was thinking about converting, asking these many questions, they would have a, f a few days to stop or else that person asking those many questions about Christianity, uh, you know, would eventually be uh, killed and would bring trouble onto themselves. Hey, uh, Hussein, let, 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 let me yes. let me uh, let, let me pause you there, because uh, that's an that's an important point. And, and the reason that's an important point is. Uh, a few years ago, there was a case with a girl named, you've you probably heard of it, the, uh, it, here in America, there was a case with a girl named uh, Rifka Berry. Uh, she ran away from home. She said that her father had threatened to kill her for becoming a Christian. And all over the media, we heard over and over again that Islam does not promote the death penalty for leaving Islam, which was very strange uh, for those of us who, uh, who study the Muslim sources, uh, uh, CL, um, for, given the... Uh, What's the Sunni perspective? What would the Sunni perspective on apostasy be? Well, it would be the same as what he just told us. Um, you're given a few days. Usually, uh, the scholars say, um, for, uh, scholars will fix, say, three days where you think it over and you can recant, you know, your apostasy. And if you don't, well, at that point, the state is supposed to put you to death. Precisely, without hesitation. Yeah. And and the the only the, the only real difference among the the, the four the, the four Sunni schools and the and the Shia schools is on the matter of how long whether whether you whether you are given a waiting yeah. period, and on whether females should be killed in the, in the same way. Yeah, because uh, w one of the four schools and the Shia is, is position is that you would imprison a woman. You would Precisely. imprison a woman until she converts back. Um, but not not the man. Yeah, and even but, though uh, you don't find that uh, that uh, qualification or that uh, exception in Muhammad's statements, mm -hmm. Muhammad said, uh, "If anyone mm -hmm. anyone discards his religion, kill him." Mm -hmm. exactly. Now that's just the general statement that's inclusive of males and females. And so what uh, what the religious leader was telling Hussein is absolutely correct. Hundred percent right. If, yeah, right. We, he wasn't so, being politically yeah. correct. He wasn't trying to appease the Westerners. He was telling him the truth because he was dealing with a Muslim. So a Muslim was telling a Muslim honestly, look, be careful, because the path you're going, if you're in a Muslim country, we would have killed you by now. So uh, we, we, have, we, we have to praise God that, that, that people are protected to ask these kinds of questions um, in, uh, in Canada. <laughs> What was that? Well, I was going to say he did, he hadn't even said at that point yeah. that he wanted to leave Islam. He yeah. was just asking yeah. questions. Yeah, sure. just yeah, well, about right. now, so some 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 leaders who take it seriously will take uh, lots of any sort of criticism of of, of Islamic teachings as hey you're you're That's you're, a dangerous you're, you're apostasy. Yeah, uh, he could sense that this person's questions were not normal. He wasn't asking in order to attack Christianity. He wasn't asking to disprove Christianity. He was asking because it, it, it seemed he was interested in Christianity, and he sensed that, mm -hmm. and he's basically warning him, mm -hmm. pull back, you know, if you, if you know what's good for you, for you, you don't want to go down that road, mm -hmm. so pull back. And glory to Jesus, he didn't. So. All right, so, we, so what he was being told is accurate according 100%. to Islam. Mm -hmm. But that didn't stop Hussein. Hussein, what happened, uh, what happened after that? Yes. Well, I believe that... He said that to me to scare me away from the thought of converting. Exactly. But really, it did the opposite. It actually put fear in my heart about Islam. And I said to myself, 
you know, just like everyone else would think, well, that's just one opinion, you know? That's not necessarily what Islam teaches. Yet again, like Sam Shmuel, like you guys just went over, uh, you know, going back to the early days of Muhammad, even today, the Quran teaches us to kill apostates. Um, yeah, so the next day I asked one of my Muslim friends, Rashid, to uh, go to a church with me. And he asked me why I wanted to go to a church. And I said, well, because I just want to know more about Christianity. And, you know, I don't want to go alone. I don't want to sit by myself. So the same week on the Sunday, we went to a church, a random church. Um, it was a Pentecostal church. But, <laughs> uh, we sat down and you think that this is the uh, part of my story where I heard the gospel of Christ, understood it, accepted Christ. Uh, when I tell you guys that I absolutely like understood nothing, <laughs> yeah. it all went through one year out the other. Mm -hmm. um, so then, you know, we left. So then... The next Sunday, I was at a, a mall, a shopping mall, with one of my other Muslim friends. We were sitting upstairs in the cafeteria, and I remember the conversation we were having. We were discussing the, cruci uh, the crucifixion of Jesus. And my only objection against Christianity at this point um, was, was Jesus pierced uh, in the palm of his hand, or was he pierced uh, in his wrist? <laughs> <laughs> great objection, and, great objection. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it wasn't anything about, you know, uh, is the Trinity true or did Jesus actually die? You know, that that's, you know, it's actually pretty funny why, I don't even know why I thought that in the first place. Uh, you know, I thought about, you know, how come the nails, how come he didn't fall off? How did the nails hold him up without him falling off the cross? Um, anyway, so then I see an old friend of mine walking towards us, to our table, all dressed up. And he joined us and, you know, we shared a meal. And we continued our conversation, and I asked him where he was coming from. He said, church. And uh, anyway, so then we uh, talked more about Christianity, and then he offered me his Bible. He said, look, here's my Bible. Go home, read the Gospels. So we exchanged numbers. I went home. I did not read the Gospels. <laughs> A few days later, he calls me and asks me again, did you read the Gospels? So then I went to the table of contents in the Bible. I, I understand that the popular choice of gospel to read from, if you're new to the Bible, is the Gospel of John. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually, I went to Matthew, the first gospel. I read chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I came to 5, um, and I read this. Do you guys mind if I read a verse or two? No, oh, no. And, and, don't, and, don't and, ask. And, yeah, and for, uh, and, and for uh, just for, for people who uh, haven't spent a lot of time um, talking to uh, Muslims, I've found that uh, Muslim, many Muslims love uh, the Sermon on the Mount. Um, and uh, so it's, uh, th this, is, this, is power this is powerful stuff. And, and, and there's a reason for that. Jesus' words are uh, powerful. So go ahead. So I came across Matthew 5, and this is what I read. And this is Jesus speaking. Uh, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? Um, and if you love, and if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Mm -hmm. When I read this verse for the first time as a Muslim, it, it changed my heart completely. It, it touched my heart. Like I said to myself, you know, this cannot be from a man. This has to be divine. This has to be from God. In Islam, not to bash Islam, or I'm not on here to offend anyone or talk. You know, that's your job. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, in Islam, I wasn't taught that sort of love. Um, so when I came to this, I understood the, uh, the person of Christ, that God is love. Those three words, love your enemies. Like, in Islam, we're taught to, uh, like, ever since I was born, like, you know, I've known to, if someone fights you, fight them back. If someone slaps you, slap them back. Here's God, here's Jesus saying, I say to you to love your enemies, bless those who curse you, pray for those who hate you. Um, 
So, Amen. and then that, that's, that was really my turning point of my journey of seeking for the truth. Mm -hmm. My question, David, in response to what I just said, he said he wasn't taught these things in Islam, the kind of love the Lord Jesus Christ mentions in the Gospel of Matthew, not just Matthew, we find it all throughout the Gospels, mm -hmm. also in the teachings of his blessed apostles mm -hmm. and the prophets the Lord Jesus sent to the church. Now, some will say, well, Bill, he was ignorant of, of, of Islam. You know, he didn't know much about the Quran because Allah's love is comparable to the love described by Jesus in the Gospels. What would we have to say in response to it? Because they'll say, ah, oh, see, he didn't know the Quran. Well, I didn't know the Quran, he would have seen. Allah loves everybody. Well, that, well that, mm. you, know, you know as well as I do that that's false according to the Quran. This is Surah 3, verse 32 of the Quran. Yes, right. It says, Allah does not love unbelievers. Right? Mm. And the reason, the reason that's important Allah not loving unbelievers is that that means Allah only loves believers, of course. And yeah. you, go, you go throughout the rest of the Quran, and Allah doesn't love those who are proud. Allah doesn't love those who, are ex who exceed the limits. So it's not just believers, but believers who are in really good standing, right, who are living really good lives. Um, Allah loves them, but he doesn't love unbelievers. And the reason that's a problem is, in, you know, according to, to classical classical um, theology, any, any sort of classical theology, theological tradition, God is a being that if you can think of a greater one, what you're thinking of is not God. In other words, if you tell me you've got, you, you're, you're thinking about God, if I can even describe a being who would be greater than that being in any way, then what you're thinking of is, is not God. And so if you say God only loves certain people and that God only loves us after we first love him. You're saying that God is, is limited in love. And what I mean by that is, think about Christians. We are commanded, uh, as Hussein pointed out, to love everyone. Well, wait a minute. If I love everyone, even my enemies, and God doesn't love everyone, that would make my love greater than God's love. I would be greater than God in love. And what that means is, whatever God, whatever God it is that I'm greater than, it, it, can't, be, um, it can't be the true God. And it, it's, this is especially interesting because uh, what, what Hose, the passage Hussein just read there, this is Jesus talking. Muslims are, Muslims are supposed to believe what Jesus says. And Jesus says, if you love those who love you, what are you doing? Right? What, what, what are you doing here? Now You're think not, about yeah. this. Exactly. That's how the Quran describes Allah. He's a being who loves you if you first love him. But that's the sort of love Jesus ascribes to sinners and tax collectors. Right? So that's, uh, it's very interesting that the sort of love Jesus um, is proclaiming there is actually a condemnation of the sort of love that is described in the Quran, the sort of love me first and then I might love you, uh, sort of love that, that it's exhibited by Allah. Hossein was a little too nice to say it, but we, uh, we went ahead and <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll say it for you. We'll say it for you, Hossein. Exactly. So that's what, why we're here. We, we're the ones who attack Islam, not you. No, I'm just kidding. So, so Hussein, uh, you, 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 you are apparently attracted to the teachings of Jesus. Did you, did you become a Christian after that, right after that, or, or was there more to the journey? Yeah, there, yeah, there's more. Please, sure. Go ahead, go ahead, continue. Okay, so a couple of days later, I, I had a dream of Jesus. Um, in the dream, he, uh, he looked at me face to face. No words were spoken. He just, I, I saw him face to face. He was right in front of me. And then I saw the side of his face. And I woke up. And well, let me just say something. About my Christian friend, the one that I spoke with on the phone, she was like the, uh, the catalyst of this whole thing happening. Um, like, she didn't preach the gospel to me. She didn't even say, say the word sin. But all it took was the face of Jesus and Right as soon as I woke up, I knew that Jesus was Lord, was the Son of God. You see, oftentimes, I, like, personally, I, I try my heart, hardest to convince people, convince Muslims of the gospel. You know, I, I use big words like righteousness. Like the average person, you know, doesn't use <laughs> those words, you know, righteousness, justification. Uh, you know, we try so hard. Let me give you guys an analogy. Like, for example, like a toddler or a kid. You wouldn't speak to a child the way you would with an adult, you know, with complex uh, terms and uh, complex con concepts. See, God in the dream, he spoke to me beyond human language. Um, I, I just knew that that was the Lord. Uh, nobody preached the gospel to me. 
Um, although later, you know, I did my studies, I went to the Bible, to the scriptures, and, you know, did my research. Um, and then, uh, so as soon as I woke up, I went to my mom and I said, Ma, I had a dream of Asa. Um, and she looked at me with a blank face, sort of like a disgusted look, and said to me, you know, who, who are you to have a dream of a prophet? And then she went around the house and lit up scented candles. I guess it's tradition in Islam to cast out jinns, demons. <laughs> she thought she thought I was having a uh, demonic experience. When see, I couldn't really explain what was going on. <laughs> this is what the Bible means when uh, the Bible says uh, that you have the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. When the Holy Spirit of God, the Ruh al Qudus, draws you near to uh, to Himself. Oh, yeah. um, so again, it didn't take all, all this intellect, you know, all this research. Like I said earlier, you know, I'm not going to pretend that I, you know, did something to, uh, you know, achieve this. Uh, God revealed it to me. Um, and and uh, all it took was a willing part on, on, on my part. So you be, so that's, that's when you became a Christian? No. <laughs> no. Still didn't become a Christian. Did God, ha did God have to get a baseball bat for you, Hussein? <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, I'll continue. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. So then uh, a couple of days after the dream, I I asked myself, in my heart, I asked myself a question. It wasn't a prayer. I just said to myself, what if I pray to Asa, to Jesus, instead of Allah? Hmm. That moment, that, that moment, my whole life changed. Wow. I didn't know what the Holy Spirit was. You know, in Islam, okay, sorry, I'm just going to, talk about who the Holy Spirit is in Islam, and you guys can confirm it. Sure. Mm -hmm. In Islam, the Holy Spirit, the Ruh al-Qudus, is, uh, is Angel, Angel uh, Gabriel. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, so that's what the Quran teaches, uh, who the Holy Spirit is. But I knew that the Spirit of God came into my heart. I saw everything in a whole different light. Um, like the love of God came into my heart that moment, as soon as I asked, you know, what if I pray to Jesus and not Allah? And so, and so that, that's, that's when you became a Christian. Um, that's when the Holy Spirit baptized my heart, and that's when I was born again. I went to work the next day with a Bible in my hand, uh -huh. and all my friends, you know, my coworkers saw me with the Bible in my hand. My manager came up to my desk, saw me reading the Bible, thought, of, you know, thought somebody in my family died. You see, people think that you go to the Bible because, you know, one of your loved ones died, when, uh -huh. when all, all it was was I found God and God found me. Um, and that's when I was born again. So, so mm. just, uh, just to, um, uh, we, we want, we, we, we have several callers on the line. We want to get to, uh, we want to get to, to some of our callers. Um, we don't want to be too brief with, with the gospel. Um, but for people who are watching, who heard the story, um, uh, and aren't sure what the gospel is, what would, what would be, you know, sort of, uh, uh, how would you describe the, the gospel for people who are hearing that but want to know exactly what, what exactly the, the Christian gospel is? Okay. Um, two things. I, I just want to say two things. That's an excellent question. Um, first of all, our faith is based on the witness, the justification, and the assurance of God. It's not based on our feelings. A lot of people on YouTube comment and say, oh, well, um, you know, uh, it's a feeling, or he converted because it feels good. He feels blessed. Again, our faith is not based on how we feel. Feelings are conditional. It's based on the assurance of the Holy Spirit. I want to give you guys, you know, the viewers, uh, some verses to look up in the Bible, which please, I wrote down. Uh, okay, so if you go to, uh, and then I'll read a verse if you guys don't go mind ahead. me reading. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, brother. Um, if you go to First Thessalonians chapter one verse five. First Thessalonians chapter one verse five. If you go to Titus chapter 3, verses 4 to 6, yeah. again, that's Titus chapter 3, verses 4 to 6. If you go to the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verses 14 to 16, again, that's Hebrews chapter 10, verses 14 to 16. The assurance and the guarantee is the Holy Spirit. When one receives the, ho when one receives the Holy Spirit, you just know that you're saved. I want to read a, uh, a verse in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Not a verse, but a, a few verses. And then I'll, I'll explain a few things. Um, this is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'll start from verse 10. 
It says, uh, but God has revealed these things to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man, which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. I'm sorry. No, it's all right, brother. Um, Express your love for the Lord Jesus. He's worthy. Lord bless you and fill you with his spirit, with his joy, his love. I promised myself not to, you know, get emotional, but... No, bro. Go ahead. Jesus is worthy, uh, brother. Like... I was telling myself that I'm not worthy to come on here and talk. Hallelujah. Lord, make our heart tender for him. Just give me a minute. I'll, I'll continue the verse in a minute. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so Sam. Praise um, God. Yeah. Praise uh, the Lord. Again, I just, we, 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 yeah. look, listen, man, we, uh, we, yeah. we, we praise God for you. Hallelujah. Because, uh, we're Sam. We, we, we're, we're, those of us here are a little too much on the intellectual side, right? Yes, and, yes. and it's, uh, that's what it is. Uh, we, Taste and see we, that the Lord is good. We long, we long for the yeah. the, the yeah. love of Christ that that, that you've that you've just shown, and so um, and and we just have to say, um, given that the the Almighty Himself uh, chose you out of this world, um, uh, it's humbling. We, we we don't believe this is coincidence that you yeah. that we that you that you have this chance to uh, to to share it with others. Uh, um. The, the uh, greatest reward that one can have is eternal life. And Amen. when we go to uh, John chapter 17, verses 3, Jesus says, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, speaking of the Father, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So if you know God and a son, you have the greatest reward. Hallelujah. Period. Hallelujah. I mean, uh, I'd be happy with that. That's sufficient. It's, I'm satisfied with it. The point I was trying to make earlier about the, uh, the Holy Spirit, I just want to finish the last two verses, which will answer that question also. Go ahead. Since Go ahead. we're on the topic of the greatest gift being uh, the Holy Spirit. Um, two, two verses. So, uh, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Um, the most precious gift or reward, well, reward wouldn't be the word. The most precious gift God can give anyone is his Holy Spirit, his precious Holy Spirit. Let's say, let me give you an, an example um, to answer that question. Let's say you saw me on the street uh, walking by you. You didn't know me. Um, you want to know what's on my mind or what's on my heart, unless if I, you know, share what's on my mind, what's on my heart, right? In the same way, it works the same way, same way with God. Unless he gives you his Holy Spirit, you just don't know God, period. Amen. You know, Amen. You, can, you can know a book, you can know a religion, you can know a prophet, um, but you don't know God. That's the essence of God, the nature of God is his Holy Spirit, the Ruh al -Qudus. You know, one time I was trying to explain to my uh, mom and my dad, uh, that the Ruh al-Qudus in the Quran, this was like my first month of being Christian, uh, that the Ruh al-Qudus in the Quran is actually the Holy Spirit of God. And, of course, I got kicked out for that. Um, I, was, I think that was the second time I got kicked out. Um, the point I'm trying to make is, until you have the Holy Spirit of God, seek and you will find. Until you have that, you don't have eternal life. 100% on the question. Yeah. A absolutely, brother. All right. Well, we, we have about three minutes left. So, uh, what what are you, what 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 final words do you have for uh, uh, for Muslims who might be watching this? And we know we know because we got a call. Uh, we know Muslims are watching this. So, uh, what would you have to say from uh, people who share your background? Um, I mean, seek. I mean, if you if you're genuinely wanting to know the truth. Uh, God knows your heart. I mean, we're not talking about the surface. We're talking about the inside. The difference between Christianity and Islam, Christianity cleanses the inside, circumcises the heart of a, of a person, of a man or a woman. Islam, okay, now uh, <laughs> I'm going to compare the two, okay? With Islam, it's about the outer appearance. Um, 
you know, I can give examples. Like, for example, like the hijab. I understand there are moral and cultural reasons the hijab is worn, but, you know, it's outer appearance. The beard. I understand Shias disagree with the beard, but, you know, Sunnis have that or Wahhabis or whatever. Um, you know, praying, praying in public. Christ told us to go into our rooms in secret and pray to our Father, and then we'll be rewarded openly. Um, Ramadan, for example, it's outward. The whole world knows people are fasting. Jesus said, you know, wash your face. Don't have a sad countenance. Um, don't, do not appear to men that you're fasting. Don't proclaim it to the world. Islam, everyone knows when Ramadan is. It's a whole month of uh, fasting when, you know, with Christianity, it's inward. If you truly want to be cleansed inwardly and be purified, not outwardly, but inwardly, the only, the only one that can do that is Christ. Through his Amen. sacrificial death, his uh, death on the cross, and then he resurrected, giving us hope, giving us uh, um, uh, grace and uh, guarantee that, um, you know, we will be given eternal life. 